If you're anything like me, you don't have a ton of money to spend on network gear. Specifically, a server with a ton of storage. So the idea behind this video is to essentially build something out of what most people would consider junk. And, of course, for as cheap as possible. The goals are to gain a large amount of storage, add GPU encoding for Plex, and have the ability to run VMs and Docker images for Home Assistant, Pi-hole, and other network services currently running on my old server. Also, keep in mind, I do not have sponsors or ad revenue, so everything purchased came from my own pocket. All right, let's head downstairs. All right, we are now in the server room, AKA my unfinished basement. It is not the nicest place to hang out, but I figure for the sake of the video, it's probably best that we are in the same room as the servers, otherwise they're a little bit harder to work on. Okay, let's go over the hardware. In this video, we will be using a 2U Lenovo RD240 server. It's a bit on the loud side, but not too loud for my purpose. If you live, work, play, watch TV, sleep in the same room as your servers, then this probably is not the best bet. So I figured this is a good option because it fits in our budget nicely at about $150 to $250 used depending on specs. That's without drives. Obviously make sure you've got all the drive caddies with it, otherwise it's gonna be very difficult to finish this build. So our server in particular for this video is a dual Xeon E5607 with 20 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Definitely not fast in today's standards. Also, not particularly power efficient, but we're not going after super economical in this vi video. We're going after cheap, and this is cheap. So, you have a server, now you need hard drives. No problem. A quick search on eBay revealed a set of super cheap eight terabyte SAS drives pulled from a Sun storage array. Okay, let's buy them and hope they work and don't have any funky Sun firmware loaded on them. I don't think that's actually a thing, but I don't know for sure that it's not a thing. So we'll just be prepared for some funkiness when we turn this thing on. And if it works perfect, well, then I will do a happy dance. Next, we need some SSDs for cache and VM storage. Well, we need at least one. A quick scavenger hunt around my house revealed a nice 40 gigabyte Intel SSD. Not entirely sure if we will use this because it's pretty small, but we'll keep it handy. We will also be using the boot drive that I stole from my wifey's work computer. The motherboard died in it, so I figure she's not gonna miss the hard drive at the moment anyways. So we'll deal with that later. Finally, we need a GPU for hardware video encoding. For this, we found an NVIDIA M2000. Yes, M2000. Generally, the P2000 seems to be the most commonly used for media encoding. However, according to the interwebs, this one should be sufficient for about 10 to 13 streams. So we're just gonna buy that and hope for the best. Worst case scenario is it literally doesn't help at all. I also picked up a eight times to 16 times PCIe ribbon extension cable. Hopefully it'll do the trick because there's not a lot of space in there and we're gonna have to shove that thing in somehow because I don't really want it hanging out the back. So we might have to MacGyver it a bit, but uh, we'll make it fit. I always make things fit. Okay, let's add some movie magic and boom, here are all my orders ready to go. All right, so this, although it really is not video card shaped. Um, it has to be our video card because that's all that I ordered online. So let's uh, open this and see what's actually in it. I really hope it's a video card. Otherwise, uh, this video is going to have to go on pause for a bit. Wow, they used a lot of tape. Oh, oh they shoved it in sideways. Okay, that probably makes more sense. Oh, yeah, that feels feels about the right weight for what it is. Wow, this is not very, no like anti-static bag or nothing. Just a bunch of orange bubble wrap. All right, well, let's hope this sucker works. It's pretty sketchy packaging. Uh, let's take a closer look at that. Um, there it is, Quadro M2000. Um, Part of the reason I wanted to go with this card is because it doesn't require any external power. So I'm hoping uh, it runs off the uh, ribbon cable without a problem. Man, that thing is a little beat. I don't know if you can tell, it's pretty scuffed up, but 
fan seems to spin somewhat freely. So, okay. So there's our GPU. I'll just uh, put it back in its bubbles so that it doesn't get broken in between now and the time to build the server. Okay. Now here, look at that. Please handle with care. Now the question is, did they actually handle with it at care or is it gonna be that they drop it and do all sorts of other things? Overall, the box seems to be in good shape, so let's cut to it. You're not here to watch an unboxing, you're here to build a server. So, now we got lots of pink bubble wrap. That looks good. And we got two taped up bubble wrap bags within the bubble wrap. Oh wow, this is very good packaging in, in comparison to the, the Quadro. All right. Oh, look at this. It's not bad. So it's an HGST brand. Um, says eight terabytes right on it. SAS, perfect. It also has the uh, good old Sun logo on there, which may or may not be a concern. We'll find out a little bit later on. Um, yeah, this looks great. I actually thought they had uh, drive sleds and I thought I was gonna have to take them all out of the sleds, but this is honestly better because it's gonna save a lot of time. All right, so let's just uh, speed that up and we'll get all these hard drives out. Okay, it's time to put these drives where they go. So let's pull out uh, all the drive trays and full disclosure, this server itself uh, does have a whole bunch of drives in it, but they're all puny and not really much of an upgrade from what I had. So we're just going to pull all these suckers. Wow, there's quite a mixture of drives in here. So we've got two 300s, two two terabytes, two one terabytes. And oh, nothing in that one. But randomly there's another two terabyte in this one. Okay, so we just need to take all these uh, apart and mount our new drives. So this is now another movie magic moment and fast forward. Okay, so there's two different sizes of screws that were used in this project. How annoying is that? Okay, gotta go get a smaller Phillips. Okay, let's pop the top. Okay, let's see what we got in here. I already know what's in it, but you don't. Okay, so we've got a uh, couple CPUs, heat sinks. We've got a ma massive shroud plastic apparatus here over the uh, over everything, basically, and that's to direct the airflow from the uh, front fans here. Um, and then over here we got our SAS card and our PCIe ports. I'm not, let's just see how this sucker pops out. I think these just unscrew and then we can just pull this whole shebang right out of here. Oh wow, that's literally more than I thought was gonna come out. I don't know if you, how well you can see it on the video. Okay, so there's our LSI RAID card um, and there's our PCI eight times slots. So I thought about just adding the GPU to the, the 16 times that's actually on the motherboard but that means I would have to use, well actually no, that literally wouldn't work because there's only six SATA ports on the motherboard. So that's not an option at all. So anyway, so my plan is we're gonna try to move this sucker down a few slots and then we're gonna plug in the expansion card and try to get the GPU to fit on top somehow. I think it'll work. Okay, let's give it a shot. Slow down for a sec and just take a look at this, uh, this card here. I'm just trying to see if I can find some specs. Oh, copyright 2007. 
How old is this thing? That can't be right. Can it? Well, not a ton to see on here, but um, let's just go ahead and uh, stick it in a lower slot and uh, continue on with the process here. Let's, oh, I already opened this. I don't know why I'm trying to cut it. Here's our PCIe extension. Ooh, there we go. Right from China. Let's hope this thing works. An Amazon special, so I assume it'll work. Oh wow, this, I've never seen one like this. Check this out. It's got like rubberized, separated um, ribbons. Interesting. Um, oh, and it looks like they've got, is it covered? It kind of looks like the slot's covered in some sort of protective, oh wow, wow, it had a protective cover on it. This looks really high quality. Okay, so we're gonna plug that guy in. Um, I'm starting to think this might be harder than I thought to make this GPU fit in here. Okay, so that's fully plugged in. Um, that really does not leave us a whole ton of room. So we're gonna go, I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit. I'm gonna go, don't mind my reach gonna grab this card, which again, I am unsure if it's even gonna work. So if we stick this sucker like this, okay, I'm gonna say that almost for sure, we're just gonna have to take this off um, because it is not gonna go in at all with it on. Where's my other crappy screwdriver? There we go. So we're gonna start with with that. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. So we've got our quadro here. We've got our ridiculous, huge ex uh, motherboard expander here with its metal bracket. So I'm hoping, oh, wow, this is, this is definitely kind of sketchy. Will that go in like that? Oh, geez. Oh, it's so close. Oh, we're like a quarter inch out. <sighs> hmm. I don't think this is gonna work like this. We're gonna have to go to plan B. This is definitely, oh wait, actually, hold on. Can I, oh, oh. Oh, there's probably so many people cringing watching this right now. Well, if the card worked before we started, we I have no guarantees that whether or not I broke it or it came broken now. So let's just hope it still works when we're done. Oh man, okay. So I don't think this is gonna work. This was wishful thinking at best. I will admit that. Oh, actually, hold on. I got it to sit in a little bit. Oh, it's still, it's so close. Also, the airflow is not going to be great if it's that high up. Um, okay. So, plan B. I don't really have any extra height on that. I think we're just going to have to omit this whole metal bracket contraption here, which concerns me only a little bit because obviously that means our RAID controller is not gonna be secure. But at the same time, I think it'll be good enough. Maybe we can put some zap straps in it or something and that might hold it in place. Okay, so we're gonna unplug that guy. We're just going to unplug the SAS connectors here and pull those suckers back through the hole. Oh man, this thing's dusty. I don't know if you can see the dust coming up at me, but it's intense. Oh, hey, look, I lied again. There's all the SAS ports. Technically, they're SATA ports, but they should be SAS compatible. Hmm. I 
ideas are forming in my head. All right, we're going to take a second and see if I can, if I have anything that I can replace these with because I'll just use the on board if this works. Long story short is I couldn't find anything in my stash that will allow me to omit the raid card. And because this is a budget build, we just need to make it work. There is no more money to spend on this sucker. So we're just gonna pull this card out and we will do our best to secure it. We'll just slide that in. I mean, honestly, this is going in a, like it's never gonna be moved. So I, it doesn't, it's not really that bad at the end of the day. So this thing, and I also just realized this has got magnets on it. So that means this should install right here. And then we'll plug this guy in like so. And then our GPU will go just like so. And I'm just going to, no, oh, that's too high. So we're gonna have to shimmy it down a little bit which is actually perfect because that gives me a little bit more. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We've even got enough room for airflow. Beautiful. Man, someone is rolling in their grave right now looking at this monstrosity, but this will work. And now we got this massive hole in the back too uh, that used to be covered by this um, that will allow for some great airflow. Okay, GPU is installed. So this has a DVD drive in it. And we all know that DVD drives are basically useless. So I think we are just going to try and unplug that from its SATA connection. I don't know, I'm just gonna try to reach in and pull. Oh, what the heck? That's not a normal SATA power connection. Oh, is it got a clippy? Yeah, it's got a clippy, but I think I can, there we go, hit it with my finger. Okay, so let's uh, take a close look at this here. So we got a normal um, SATA data port, but this is not normal. And I was really hoping for the sake of ease that we would have a standard power connector, but we don't, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, figure out what we're gonna do with that. What else we got here? We got a power connector here. That looks like if this was for the, uh, the uh, 8U version, that would be power another, another backplane. But uh, that means there's plenty of power available here. So we just might need to do some splicing. Okay, so we got our soldering supplies. One butane powered soldering iron. Uh, one roll of solder. We've got a pair of pretty dull wire strippers. And we've got a whole bunch of SATA cables chopped off of a, another power supply. And by SATA cables, I mean SATA power connectors. So I figured because I'm likely gonna be adding additional hard drives in the future, I should probably just add four SATA power ports right now and call it, call it a day. So the only downside now that I'm realizing this is this doesn't give me a lot of room if I'm attaching this here. Like that's like, what if I want to put the drive like over here where the soldering iron is? That's just like not enough, can't even pull it. So we're gonna have to make this a little more complex. So, okay, we're back. And this time I brought a dead power supply. So, oh man. I don't know what idiot did this, but this would have been perfect. This is a SATA connector that's clearly been chopped and it's got a very long cable. And this, this literally happened a few minutes ago when I chopped all these connectors off and there's also a long cable. So I guess I'm the idiot. Oh, well, no problemo. We can still make this work. So I feel like this is a fair distance for the, the furthest side. So we're just gonna chop these off. So typically in, in PC power, your red is your five volts and your yellow is your 12 volts. Um, in this case, we're not actually gonna use this extra wire uh, because the drive will work without it. So we're just gonna tape that off right now. 
Okay, so on this end, we're probably just going to go ahead and cut. This feels like such a waste, but I can't splice onto this, so I just think it's best to cut it off. So here goes nothing. Wow, these are super dull. Maybe we should just fast forward a bit because this is going to take a while. Okay, we're just going to slow down for a second and we're just going to solder the wires. I've decided that I might just use the torch because it's quicker. So let's just give that a shot here. Oh yeah, look at that. That heat wire heats up fast. I don't advise using a torch unless you've got some experience doing so because it's really easy to light wires on fire. Um, now, as you might be thinking, why are you not heat shrinking these? And the simple answer is yes, I know I should be heat shrinking them, but I don't have any heat shrink on hand. And again, this is a budget build. So I think it's already good enough that we're soldering it. We don't need to heat shrink it too. This will be perfectly fine. Um, fun fact, you might be thinking also, why are these orange on this harness and everything else is yellow? Well, Dell's or, or Dell likes to use stupid colors that are not standard. So when you look at a normal connector here, hold on, you've got, wow, I just screwed that up. So here's what happened. I knew that Dell didn't use standard colors and I forgot which one was 12 volts and I hooked it up to the orange, but really 12 volts is white on, on Dell power supplies. Oh, Dell, why do you do this to me? Okay, so I'm just gonna snip this. We're gonna fast forward a little bit while I fix my boo-boo here. Good thing I noticed it when trying to show off how smart I was and tell you about Dell power supplies. Okay, resume for a second. We've got our first SATA connector here ready to go and then we're gonna add two more or whatever I have here. Yeah, let's add two more. So on this side, so we can put a hard drive over here with this one, and then we'll all be able to plug in two more just on the other side here. So we've got now three standard SATA power connectors. Now, a couple things to mention. If you plan, attempt to do this yourself, I'm gonna start by saying do this at your own discretion because I will not be held liable if you blow up your stuff. Having said that, I've done this, uh, I've got quite a bit of experience modifying electronics like this, so I feel fairly confident that this will work just fine. Um, one thing I am going to do though is I'm going to get the vacuum and I'm going to vacuum up all these little pieces of bits and wire and all these odds and ends. I'm going to give it the old upside down tap test though because we don't want... Oh, I should actually be really careful. I forgot about my video card situation. Oh, look at that. Didn't even budge. Well, that's a good sign for things to come. Uh, okay, we got our SATAs. We're just gonna do a little quick tape job on these so that these don't touch anything, although I, I really don't think it will matter if they do. But I'm a better safe than sorry kind of person. Where did I put my electrical tape? We're ready to move on to the next step. Let's install the SSD. So let's, where are we gonna put this guy? First of all, let's see what port he's plugged into on the motherboard. SATA 5. Interesting. Let's move that to SATA 0. Just so that's gonna, for whatever reason, maybe help me keep track of what's what. So, we got that. We're gonna plug in. I've actually got a fair amount of room up here. So for now, I'm just gonna shove this sucker in just right up here. 
because it'll fit, but I'm gonna plug the power in after. And then it's right behind a fan, so it should get good cooling. And once we know this thing will work, I'm gonna two-sided tape all these drives in here because this is just a little bit, a little bit too loose for my liking. I just, I, I'm not worried about it failing or anything, but I'm more so worried about it just making a rattle or a vibration noise. Okay, so I think we're ready to fire this thing up and see if it still works. All right. Just looking at the uh, front panel, we've got some hard drive activity lights. Not really sure what's going on with them at this point, but uh, we're waiting. You can probably hear it behind me. It is loud when it fires up. Oh, there we go. The spans are slow. The fans are slowing down now. Okay, so far not looking amazing. And post. Post. Servers do notoriously take a long time to post. However, I think we might be a little bit beyond the allowable time. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Do, do, do. Yeah, nope, nope, nope. So I'm thinking I might have to pull the video card because it's possible that there's a setting that automatically will take uh, from a PCIe slot if a card is present. And we don't want that to be the case. We want to use on board. Okay, so the system would not boot with the video card installed. So right now we're going to have a quick look and see if there is some way to set, ah, boot graphic adapter priority. Boom, onboard VGA. There's our problem right there. Okay, fingers crossed, let's post. Oh yeah, think server. Think server, think server. Ah, beautiful. That's what I want to see. Let's uh, show post screen, see what's happening. Oh, I'm gonna have to change, I gotta turn on quick boot because this is taking a very long time because it's doing an old fashioned uh, memory check right now, if you can see that. So let's just, oh, yeah, there, that skips it. So let's go into the mega raid, uh, raid bias here again, and let's see what happens. So in the perfect world, all eight of our disks will show up and say healthy. Hey, it skipped it. I wonder if it's gonna try to boot off the SSD. Oh, oh, there we go. Gotta use this little roller here. Okay, click, clicky clicky. One, oh, unconfigured bad, that does not sound good. Does not sound good at all. Drives. Why do you say uncon oh, no response? Hmm. Interesting. I've got red lights on four of them on the front panel. Let's just, uh, Take a look at that. All right, we're gonna take a second to figure out if the drives are actually dead or maybe there's some sort of other issue like RAID card out of date, can't support eight terabyte drive, etc. Highly doubt that's the case, but hopefully it's something simple. Okay. So quick update, 
we may have to, I may have discovered that this raid card is no good for this purpose. So I found this other old HP SAS card, which also is still six gigabit per second. And we're going to try that and see if we have better luck for what we're trying to do here. So we're just gonna swap it out. I'm just gonna stick this up here. Oh, that doesn't look very safe. Ah, uh, hold on. Okay, that looks safer. And we're just gonna pop this sucker open again. And we're gonna switch out the raid card. So, Quadro, out you come again. And, oh, and now the ribbon's in the way, kind of. And, oh, there we go. And here is our LSI card. And uh, we're gonna take that out and we're replacing it with, as I showed you, the HP card, which I actually have no idea if it works or not. And I'm actually gonna take the battery backup module off because it's literally not necessary at all for this purpose. So we're just gonna stick that guy out of the way. And we're gonna stick this in and see if it works. Now, one thing that I did notice is I've got green lights on all the front hard drive bays now, instead of four of them showing red, which makes me wonder if there was some sort of problem with this guy. Maybe I broke it when I was fiddling with its placement. So let's go view logical drives. There are no logical drives. Well, we are obviously, oh, we gotta create, oh, hey, look at this. We might be onto something. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a whole whack of eight terabyte SAS drives. Eight of them to be specific. Okay, so I'm feeling a little more confident about our drives now, even though I really don't have any reason to. Um, but what we need to do is we need to access the array configuration and see if I can, or the RAID configuration and see if I can get this into like JBOD mode, which stands for just a bunch of disks. And I don't think I can because I don't have really any menu options. So despite my best efforts, this might also not work. So we'll do a quick Google search and see what I can find. Um, and then we might have to go to plan C, which is also go back into my stash and see if I got another raid card. Okay, so here is what I had to do to make it work. I kept the HP RAID card installed in the server. Um, long story short, I had to put the cache back on it because I needed that. I don't know why I took it off. Um, it would not allow me to create more than one array or virtual disk with it removed, uh, which leads me to my next point is to make this work, we created eight RAID zero virtual disks with one hard drive in each. Um, not really a recommended way to do it because uh, it's likely going to break smart monitoring. It'll be a chore to replace a drive because we'll have to create a new RAID 0 array on the replacement drive. Um, things like that. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is I won't be able to spin down the drives during uh, the times that they're not in use. So that kind of sucks, but I don't know for sure. Um, but well, we'll uh, continue the process and, and give it a shot. So time to install Unraid. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and create a bootable USB device. So we'll just go online, uh, go to the Unraid website. We will download the Windows uh, installer or uh, boot device creator and go through all the steps, create a flash drive and boom. Here it is, done, ready to go. Gotta love that movie magic, huh? All right, so let's stick this sucker in and uh, see what happens. So we're just waiting for the RAID controller to initialize and then we should be on to booting into Unraid for the first time ever. My Unraid virginity is about to be broken unless something goes wrong, which is pretty likely. All right, we are at the login screen. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, oh, there's some errors there. I wonder if those are gonna affect us. 
Well, anyways, we're gonna plug this into the network and then we're gonna go upstairs and see if we can access it. All right, we are back upstairs and we are logged in to Unraid. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's start at the top here. So we've got a whole whack of unassigned drives. And at the bottom, we've got our flash drive and it's got a warning, but nothing that seems out of the ordinary. Um, Unraid device smart health. What is this? Apparently it does not like my cache drive. Interesting. Um, so we may actually swap it out for the 40 gig for now, which would be very sad. Okay, so let's set our parity drive. So we've got all of our nice SAS eight terabyte drives showing up here, which are all in their RAID zeros. And we've got our Samsung Evo, which looks like it might be dead. So let's just go ahead and set our first two devices um, as parity drives. And we are going to be using two parity drives um, as recommended on the internet. Uh, let's see here. So let's just go ahead and add all these drives in and see how much space we get. Um, I'm just gonna add this for now, but I'm not sure if we'll leave it. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit start. Wow, it really does not like that Evo. Okay, we are back and we've got problems, which really does not surprise me. So, oh my God. Okay, we are just gonna have to take out, wow, we've got lots of errors happening right now. Oof. Okay, um, we'll just pause the video for a second and um, see what happens here. Okay, so we've got all of our drives now showing their capacity. Uh, me being a complete noob at this did not format the drives, which now seems super obvious because, well, that's usually what you do when you're building a new file system. Um, anyways, so we've got all the drives. Let's have a look here. We've got all the drives showing up um, in the array. I'm assuming that this is because the, dri the parity drives are currently rebuilding, which shows down here. So in 14 hours, we'll have an answer, hopefully. Um, and yeah, so and I dug a little deeper into the cache drive here. And uh, it seems that this is a CRT or CRC error. So what we're gonna do is try a different SATA cable at some point, but I'm not going to say the drive is toast at this point because that's not necessarily the end of the world. So anyways, there you have it. We've got um, a basic setup of Unraid. It seems that all the hardware is working to the best of my knowledge so far. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, if we go into tools and system devices, we've got, uh, if we scroll down here, where was it? There is our Quadro card showing up. Um, and yeah, that seems to be, it seems to be good so far. So um, thanks for watching. This is part one of two. Part two of two is going to be configuring the array, um, do, uh, setting up Plex and a Docker and doing the GPU pass through and all that fun stuff. So make sure you watch part two. All right, thanks.